Hello and welcome. In this lesson, we'll be focusing specifically on cryptocurrency call options. We'll be looking at how they work, their payout structures, how to calculate their profit and loss, and how to calculate their break-even points when bought or sold. Let's have a brief recap of the five basic parameters that make up an option contract. First, the underlying asset, the price of which is being speculated on, for example, Bitcoin. The option type, whether the option is a call or put. That is, whether the option gains intrinsic value if the underlying asset increases or decreases. The expiry date, the date the option will expire and be automatically exercised. The strike price, this is the price at which the option buyer has the right to trade at on the expiry date. And finally, the option price, aka the option premium. This is the price the buyer pays to the seller for the right to trade the asset at the strike price on the expiry date. All options on Deribit are European style, which means they are only exercised at expiry. However, this does not stop traders being able to buy and sell the option before expiry. They are also cash settled, which means when they are exercised, it is only the profits that are paid. For example, if a Bitcoin call option with a strike price of $9,000 expires with a Bitcoin price at $10,000, then $1,000 would be paid from the seller to the buyer. On Deribit, this $1,000 is paid in Bitcoin, so this would be 0.1 BTC, or $1,000 divided by $10,000. This video is about the first of the two types, the call option. A call option is the right to buy the underlying asset at the strike price on the expiry date. Let's go through the profit and loss of a Bitcoin call option. For a call option, if the underlying price expires below the strike price, then the option expires out of the money and therefore worthless. The buyer's only loss is a premium paid to purchase this contract and of course the buyer's loss is the seller's profit. However, if the underlying asset price expires above the strike price, this option is in the money and has some intrinsic value. The seller is then required to pay the buyer the difference between the expiry price and the strike price. As all balances in Deribit are cryptocurrency, the difference in dollars will of course be converted to BTC. The buyer's profit and loss in BTC is calculated as the, in brackets, the Bitcoin price minus the strike price over the Bitcoin price again minus the option price or option premium. The seller's profit and loss of course is the opposite and can be calculated as the option price or option premium minus the in brackets Bitcoin price minus the strike price over the Bitcoin price again. Taking a look at the Bitcoin option chain for the December 2019 expiry, we can see here the $10,000 call option. Let's work through using this option as an example to calculate and visualize the profit and loss and break even point. We will assume a quantity of 1 and use a current ask price of 0 0.0425 BTC as displayed here. So, in our example, the buyer has paid 0 0.0425 BTC to the seller for this option and held the option to expiry. In the first scenario, at 0800 UTC on the 27th of December 2019, the option expires and the settlement price is $8,000. The settlement price of $8,000 is below the strike price of $10,000, so the option has expired out of the money and is therefore worthless. The buyer paid 0 0.0425 BTC for this option and received nothing in return, so they made a loss of 0 0.0425 BTC. The seller, on the other hand, collected this 0 0.0425 BTC for the option and has not had to pay anything out, so they made a profit of this 0 0.0425 BTC. In scenario 2, at 0800 UTC on the 27th of December 19, the option expires and the settlement price is... $16,000. The settlement price of $16,000 is above the strike price of $10,000, so the option has a value of $6,000. That is, the settlement price minus the strike price, or $16,000 minus $10,000.
this must be paid by the seller to the buyer. The buyer's total profit and loss can be calculated as follows. It is, in brackets, the BTC price minus the strike price over the BTC price minus the option price or premium paid for the contract. So $16,000 minus $10,000 over $16,000 again minus 0 0.0425 BTC. Simplified, that is 0 0.375, which is $6,000 in BTC, minus the 0 0.0425 BTC, which equals 0 0.3325 BTC, and this is our profit. The seller's loss will of course just be the negative of this, but can be calculated as follows. The option price, or premium, minus, in brackets, the BTC price minus the strike price over BTC price again or 0 0.0425 minus, in brackets, 16,000 minus 10,000 over 16,000. Simplified, this will be 0 0.0425 minus 0 0.375, which equates to a loss of minus 0 0.3325. This is the inverse of the buyer's profit and loss. More generally, we can plot the profit and loss as an option for both buyer and seller on a chart, like so. This chart shows the $10,000 call option we selected and used in the examples, with the expiry date along the x-axis and the profit and loss in BTC on the y-axis. The buyer's profit and loss is displayed in blue, and the seller's profit and loss is displayed in red. As you would expect, the inflection point is the strike price of $10,000. Below this point, the profit and loss is fixed to the premium paid of 0 0.0425 BTC. And this is one of the most appealing features of being long a call option. No matter how low the price falls, the option contract can never lose more than they paid for the option. They still have the long exposure similar to being long a futures contract, for example, but with a very fixed risk. That said, it's not all good news for the buyer. Notice where the profit and loss line crosses the x-axis. We could call this the break-even point. Notice how even though the call option has a strike price of $10,000, the break-even point is notably higher than this. This means the price needs to move quite far in the right direction before the position is profitable at expiry. The higher the price paid for the option, the further away from the strike price the break-even point is. The call option is at break-even when, in brackets, the Bitcoin price minus the strike price over the Bitcoin price again minus the option premium equals zero. So rearranging this formula to solve for BTC price gives us the strike price over 1 minus the option price. Taking the previous example where the option price was 0 0.0425 BTC and the strike price was $10,000, we can calculate the break-even price precisely as follows. 10,000 over 1 minus 0 0.0425. Simplified, that's 10,000 over 0.9575 which equates to 10,443.86, rounding to the nearest penny. For another example, let's calculate the break-even price of the $20,000 striked call and assume a price of 0 0.0345 BTC. The break-even price would be 20,000 over 1 minus 0 0.0345. Simplified, 20,000 over 0.9655 which equates to 20,714.66, rounded to the nearest penny. So you see, the buyer's maximum loss is always limited to the option price paid. This also means that the seller's maximum profit is also limited to the option price collected. The maximum profit for the call buyer, when measured in USD, is theoretically unlimited. But when measured in BTC, is capped at 1 BTC minus the option price. As the underlying Bitcoin price continues to rise, the amount of BTC required to pay each dollar owed decreases. Here you can see a comparison of the maximum profit and loss for the call option buyer, long, and call option seller, short, measured in both BTC and USD. There are some pros and cons of call options. A trader may wish to buy a call option instead of longing a futures contract if they believe the price is going to move higher, but they wish to have a fixed risk. It is possible, of course, to use a stop loss when long a futures contract to limit your risk. However, a call option has one very big advantage in comparison. With a regular margin account, the call option cannot be stopped out or liquidated. 
if the price spikes down even temporarily, the trader who is long the futures contract may be stopped out and unable to benefit from a subsequent price increase. The trader who is long the call option though will still be in a trade, and so still able to benefit if the price then rallies. Stop losses also have the added risk of slippage, where due to the violent nature of the price movement and thin order books, the stop loss order executes at a worse price than desired. This can lead to a larger than expected loss. Long options positions though on the other hand do not have this problem, as the maximum loss is limited to the premium paid and can never go higher. Of course there is also a downside to buying call options. Firstly, a premium must be paid. As shown earlier, this means the break-even price is higher than the strike price, and sometimes considerably so. How far away this is depends on the price paid for the option contract. Secondly, the option has a time limit. The expiry date of the option means the clock is ticking as soon as the option is purchased. If the underlying price fails to move sufficiently by the expiry date, the trade is over and will finish as a loser. So the call option buyer must not only be correct about the direction, but also the timing. This brings us neatly onto why a trader would choose to sell a call option. You see, the call option seller benefits not only when the underlying price falls, but also when it fails to rise fast enough before the expiry date. If the price expires below the strike price, the seller gets to keep the entire option premium paid by the purchaser. Even if the price rises though, they can still make some profit as long as it doesn't rise past the break-even point at expiry. The downside for the seller being that they do not get the benefit of having a fixed risk. If the underlying price keeps rising well past the strike price, their losses will also continue to rise. In summary, a call option gives the buyer a way to have a long exposure to the price of an asset with a fixed risk. The cost for this fixed risk position is the premium the buyer pays the seller. The buyer must also be correct about the timing of the rise in price when purchasing this option. And the break-even price for the call option will always be above the strike price. And how far above depends on the price paid for the option. This was a brief summary on call options available at Deribit. Thank you very much for watching.